Hello, and welcome to Catching Up with the Clemenses, brought to you by the Mark Twain House and Museum in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm Erin, and I coordinate school programs here at the museum. And I'm Jody. I care for the museum's collections. In today's chapter, we're going to talk about one of the heaviest, largest, and most complex objects in our collection, the Page Compositor. This machine has over 18,000 parts and weighs 9,000 pounds. In fact, it had to be brought into the gallery with a crane. In the last chapter, we asked you what you thought the page compositor was used for. Well, this is a typesetting machine invented by James Page and was meant for printing books and newspapers. But you still might not know what typesetting means. So let's first talk a little bit about the history of printing. Ever since humans created written languages, there have been different methods for writing those languages down. Words have been carved into stone, written on walls with natural pigments or paints, and written on papers with inks or pencils. All of those methods are done by hand, and each copy of a document or book would have to be written individually, so it took a lot of time, effort, and money to create multiple copies of anything. It wasn't until the invention of a machine called a printing press that mass production of flyers, posters, books, and newspapers became easier and cheaper. The first use of a printing press was in China, and the first book produced with the press dates to 868 CE, over a thousand years ago. The Chinese continued to improve upon the technology in their country, but in Europe, printing technology wasn't really available until 1440, when a man named Johannes Gutenberg developed his printing press. Today, we have computers and modern printers, but back in the Clemens's time, Sam would have had to write his stories out by hand or use a typewriter, and then rely on a publishing company with printing presses to make copies of his books for sale. He couldn't just print off a bunch of copies the way we would today. With early printing presses, each page of text would have to be manually laid out using small wooden or metal blocks, each with a letter, a symbol, or a space on them. These blocks were arranged to form the text to be printed on the page, inked and then passed through the printing press with a piece of paper to create the typed page. For each page, the process had to be repeated and eventually you have a complete book or newspaper. Here's an example of a composing stick with the sentence, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. But if you inked this set of type and pressed it against paper, the text would actually come out backwards. To print text that's readable, all the type would have to be set backwards like this. Do you think it would be easy to do a job like this? How fast could you write your own name backwards? At age 11, Samuel Clemens left school and started his first job as a printer's apprentice. He set type for a local newspaper. He would sit at a table with a cabinet much like this one and lay out all the letters for a newspaper page. This cabinet is called a type case, and in the drawers are a bunch of compartments to sort and store each letter and symbol that could be used on a page. What we now refer to as upper and lower case letters got their name of where they were located in this case. Upper case letters were located near the top and lower case letters near the bottom. Sam loved the printing process and called, the print, and called printing the noblest of all arts and destined in the ages to come to promote the others and preserve them. James Page was trying to invent a machine that could automate the typesetting process. So instead of a person having to place each letter block by hand, the page compositor was supposed to set the type for you, more like a typewriter would if you typed the text in here. It was supposed to produce many copies in a short period of time, making the printing process cheaper and faster. Unfortunately, the machine never worked too well. It was really complicated, the parts kept jamming, and other inventors came up with better ways to accomplish the same goals. For instance, the Thorn typesetting machine was invented here in Hartford around the same time Page was working on his machine, and it worked a lot better. Now, you're probably wondering why we have this machine here at the Mark Twain house. Well, Sam Clemens loved technology, and around 1880, he started investing money in this machine, which means he gave James Page money to help him develop the invention. As an investor, Sam didn't just supply money. 
He also had a lot of experience in printing that he was happy to share with James Page. There are many letters between, between Sam and Page discussing all aspects of the compositor, the design, its potential uses, the cost, the speed, and more. In one 1886 letter, Sam asks Page how his machine's capabilities compared to what skilled workers could do with the methods that already existed. After all, if the machine couldn't do this work faster or more accurately than people, why would any printer want to buy it? Sam proposed a competition that would test the skill of human typesetters against Page's machine so that Page would know what he was up against. He suggested that using the typesetters who worked at the main newspaper here in Hartford, the Hartford Current. Dear Mr. Page, at last I know how to settle the vexed question of how many M's per hour is good average work, both setting and distributing. Does the current use any minion? For that is much the best size for this experiment. Go to Mr. Hubbard and ask him to assemble all his force some afternoon for a trial of speed ostensibly at somebody else's desire, not yours. You don't want to be known in it. Give all the men the same paragraph of reprint, a paragraph containing just 500 M solid, and have only one break line, and that the last one. 15 or $20 will find out, once and for good, all we want to know. Inquire how many men there are, and leave with Hubbard 25 cents for each, and $11 besides for prizes. Charge it to me. In the first part of his letter, Sam uses some terms you may not be familiar with. An M is a measurement unit that's related to how wide a block of type is and its point size, which is a special term for how tall the letters are, like 12-point font. The term M comes from the letter used to calculate the measurement, an uppercase letter M. Now, there's another term you might have recognized. Does the current use any minion? Sam isn't talking about the minions you might know, though. That's just the name of a standard typeface that was common in newspaper print offices at the time because it was really easy to read. You may have noticed that Sam told Page to make sure the men in this competition didn't know James Page was behind it. Why might the typesetters in the current print shop not have wanted to help this man with his invention? One of the reasons people were trying to invent or invest in machines like the Page Compositor was that they hoped those machines would help them make more money by reducing how much it cost them to produce books and newspapers in the first place. Many things went into how much it cost to print books and newspapers. Paper, ink, type, renting space for the print shop itself, but one of the biggest costs was the money you paid people to do the challenging and high pressure work of setting all this type. If Page could get his compositor working the way he wanted to, he'd be able to sell it to newspapers like the Hartford Current. The Current would then be able to use the machine instead of paying all those people. If the typesetters knew this little competition was actually helping a man who was trying to invent a machine that would put them out of their jobs, they probably wouldn't have wanted to participate, even for a cash prize. But the machine wouldn't work and wouldn't sell if it couldn't do at least as well as the skilled typesetters. Rather than guess, Sam wanted Page to find out exactly how fast his invention needed to work to be successful. But given his own experience doing this job, he was able to guess at what the Hartford typesetters would be able to produce. I've got almighty tired of collecting guesswork typesetting estimates, east and west and north and south. Now I propose to cease from that burdensome and unprofitable correspondence and settle the thing by this sure and trustworthy method. I think it'll take the best man in Hartford 30 minutes to set 500, next best 35, next best 37 and a half, the rest along pretty close to one side or the other of 40 minutes. And in all cases, on this spurt, the men will go beyond their everyday speed a little. Yours truly, S.L. Clemens. Only two page compositors were ever fully built and neither went beyond the testing phase. A New York Evening Telegram article called them marvelously ingenious and perfect from a mechanical standpoint, worthless commercially, and the costliest machine ever built. What really sunk the page compositor was the other inventors managed to do what the page did not, make printing cheaper, 
and faster than using skilled typesetters, and basically they got on the shelf for people to buy and the page did not. In particular, as James Page was still testing and tweaking his machines, the competitors, the Mergenthaler Linotype machine, invented in 1886, was already being used at the big name publishers and newspapers. Because of his investment in the Page Compositor, its failure meant that Sam lost thousands of dollars, what today would be millions, and had to file bankruptcy, sell his Hartford home, and move to Europe. The second machine, built in 1894, was sold as scrap metal during World War II, and the original 1887 model is here in the galleries of the Mark Twain House for you to see on your next visit to the museum. Next time on Catching Up with the Clemenses, we'll talk about another modern invention, this time one in the kitchen. Do you know what this cabinet was used for? I'll give you a hint. It's really cold inside. See you next time. Do you have a question for us? You can send us an email at catchingup at marktwainhouse.org or send us a letter at the Mark Twain House and Museum, 351 Farmington Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut, 06105. Along with your question, tell us your first name, your age, and what city or town you live in. If we feature your question in a future video, we'll be sure to give you a shout out. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. We want to keep our educational materials accessible to all, but while these videos are free for you, they're not free for us. If you want to support the creation of Catching Up with the Clemens' videos and other educational programming here at the Mark Twain House Museum, please follow the link in the description below to donate now.